three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. everybody thank you so much for listening this is the real pineapple this is your humble host hunter here hope you're all having a great night uh if you wouldn't mind all i'm not sure if if you drink smoke like juice go ahead and uh pour yourself a glass light up because as i take a sip of my beer here uh some stuff we are talking about god's not dead we the people. Ugh, God, I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> so I am starting to put together my best and worst of. As y'all know, I uh, the podcast is privileged enough that we go ahead and get screeners from movie studios. So we're able to go ahead and do a very comprehensive best of uh, each year, which I'm very grateful for. But the other side of the coin is for all the great movies I get. I always say, hey, I'm always going to put just as much effort in to watching the worst shit of the year because perspective is important. And when I was sitting in my uh, local theater at my Cinemark Theater, I can't even remember what I was watching, but I saw a trailer for God's Not Dead, We the People, and I went, well, that's fucking upsetting. Why am I seeing a trailer for this? I don't fucking care. And... I had to do a little research because I was morbidly curious. So this is the fourth, count it, the fourth goddamn God's Not Dead movie in this franchise, which even saying this is a franchise makes me feel fucking gross. But here's what's weirdly, not fat, not just fascinating, but terrible. The main actor, the main quote star, unquote, of these movies, David A.R. White, who looks like Chad Kroger from Nickelback's less talented brother, Tad Kroger. (laughs) But David A.R. White, he plays Reverend Dave Hill. I think he's played the same character in each film. It doesn't fucking matter. But he is one of the co-founders of PeerFlix. And PeerFlix.com, org, whatever, is actually how I watch this movie. Because I was going to go see it at Cinemark, And I had a free pass I could have used, but even with the free pass, I would have paid like three or four dollars. I'm like, "Eh, do I want to pay three or four dollars for God's Not Dead Be the People? Not really. So it hit Pure Flix. It's uh, unfortunately hitting to uh, Blu-ray and DVD soon and uh, home video. But... I watched this on Pure Flix on a seven-day free trial, and I am very happy I got a free trial to watch God's Nut Dead We the People because, and pun very much intended, Jesus Christ, this movie sucks. And it's in the same vein, like, I can make this short. I can make this a short review, but there are several things about this movie that really piss me off, so we're going to dig a little bit. So if you've listened to my review of Unplanned, uh, you understand that I am not a fan of faith based of faith based films. I myself identify as a Christian, and here's the thing: there is good Christian media out there. One of my favorite singers for years was uh, I know she got married, but uh, her name was uh, Bethany Dillon. She's an incredible artist, incredible guitar player. Highly recommend her. Uh, uh, one of my favorite rap groups. It's a group called uh, Fourth Avenue Jones. They're not active anymore. They're an incredible band. Uh, Grits, they're a great hip-hop uh, hip hop group. Again, I don't believe they're active still, but they make incredible uh, They made incredible music. You should look them up. They're, uh, VeggieTales. I've talked about VeggieTales a couple times on the podcast. VeggieTales has this incredible like ability to go ahead and, and teach quote, biblical lessons, unquote, but it's done in, like, a fun, kind of whimsical sort of way that's actually funny. Like, the show, uh, VeggieTales is surprisingly a funny, well-done uh, show. So, it's not like you can't do this, but 
these movies where it attempts to make Christians the be- like the, where it attempts to make Christians the underdog. And I think that from Jump is where most of these faith based films fail because. To quote Chris Rock, if you're losing, who's winning? Like so, most of our most of the U.S. identifies as Christian. So when you go, oh man, Christians are so oppressed. Isn't this fucking sad? It's like no, it's not because this isn't an actual fucking problem. This is one that you're completely manufacturing. So, but I will get into all that. So, Chad Kroger's less talented brother, Tad David A. R. White. He plays Re- Reverend Dave Hill. And again, I have not watched the other three God's Not Dead movies. Even I even I only have so much time to watch bullshit. But he is a pastor. He is friends with this woman, uh, Rebecca McKinnon, who's played by Francesca. I'm going to butcher her name. Don't really care. Betta Stelly. She is the wife of uh, Antonio Sabano, uh, Sabato Jr.'s Mike. And basically, they are homeschooling their kids and teaching them about... So here's one thing. They're t- the whole crux of this movie is that this woman from Child Protective Services shows up and is like, Oh, hey, what are you teaching your kids? You better not be teaching them about God. And they're like, well, we are teaching them about God. And this lady goes, well, you shouldn't be doing that. I'm going to write you up. And... <laughs> which, which, by the way, I have a partner who's homeschooled. That's not how it works. It's not like people are busting in <laughs> into, into houses to go ahead and give you citations for teaching your kids about God. Like, like, no, not not how it works at all. You would get notice on something like that. They wouldn't just burst in. Like, like, fuck off. Anyways, but the movie from Jump really jumps right into the fear of mongering immediately because the movie even opens up with this whole over uh, voiceover by Reverend Dave Hill, who has the balls to go, freedom of choice and Christian liberties are at stake. <laughs> Sorry. Freedom of choice and Christian liberties are at stake. Uh, stand up to your local government. Is your town next? It's like, wow. Like, you're just acting like this is going to happen all over the U.S. It's And the movie starts off with the American flag and a Ronald Reagan voiceover, which I just went, that's really cute. I, I just, all right. So, a couple things about this movie. One, Dave Hill comes across like a total fucking just insincere asshole he comes across like that worship leader who looks out to the crowd for approval while they're playing like they're not actually playing for god they're playing for themselves and they're using god as a platform that's what dave comes across like so when he's talking to these people like you know i'm giving glory to god no i'm here to help you out i'm sitting here going i think you're an insincere piece of shit and there's no part of me that wants to root for you but rebecca and mike's uh, house, uh, their home is, you know, shaken to their core because of this whole, <clears throat> pardon me, because of this whole thing hanging over their heads with the whole homeschooling. There's another woman played by Amanda Jaros uh, named Taylor, who she's working, uh, she has a kid, she's a single mom, trying to do it all by herself. By the way, I I can't remember what they say she does. I think she's working at a diner or something like that. It doesn't really matter again. But everyone in this movie, for saying how Christian they are and how, you know, like, we're there for everyone. We're a family. Taylor is struggling like a motherfucker because she's dealing with this kid. She's dealing with this kid. She's doing the single mom thing. And the movie, while it is horrible at giving you timestamps and letting you know how long the, you know, how time actually progresses in this fucking thing. She flat out says at a point that her husband, who was in the Air Force, uh, or no, he worked for NASA, if memory serves, how he's been dead for, uh, no, no, he worked for the Air Force, I think, but how he had been dead for six months, six months, and no one, let me repeat, no one in her friend group, none of the main characters were supposed to go, oh my God, yeah, God, yeah. We're supposed to be cheering for them. None of them are where she has lost her husband. That is insane to me. Six months and none of you notice? 
hmm, we haven't seen your husband around for, you know, six months. Maybe you should ask what the fuck happened to him. It never comes up until it has to in this movie. And it's one of those things I just went, wow, I'm supposed to like these people? I'm supposed to care about them and get behind them? Give me a fucking break. But that is one of about a thousand complaints I have about this movie. Moving on. There's a guy here named, I'm going to butcher your name if I do, whatever. There's a guy named here named, uh, played, uh, who's, uh, wow, the character's name is Martin Yip, who's played by pa- uh, Paul Quo, is what I'm going to go with. And he is the, he's the resident Chinese guy, and he's basically there to go ahead and study American history through an immigrant's eyes so he can go ahead and spout off facts about, oh my God, did you know that America is actually the safest place to be because of our freedom? (laughs) That's the shit he's doing the whole film. He's basically, he's, he's terrible, but that is his function in this movie. He even has this line early on in the film about how I can't even go back home to visit my family because of the persecution against us. And I'm sitting there going, that's not exclusive to Christianity, motherfucker. Like, I'm sorry, do they not persecute people overseas? Fuck, they we persecute people here for far less. And, and they're acting like it's only because he's a Christian. And that for me right there is my giant ax to grind with this movie. As someone who grew up in a Christian household, who grew up going to church, who at a point was studying to be a pastor. I was studying to be a youth pastor, fun fact about me. As that person, as this man, the thing that just makes me laugh is I've had way more issues for standing up for my LGBTQ friends or being black than I've ever had any issues for being Christian. At worst, I've had people go, oh, really? Or be mildly irritated. I've never had someone go, you're a Christian, go fuck yourself, dude. I've had people say that about supporting my, about supporting abortion rights. I've had people say that to me about supporting gay marriage. I've had more people say that they're going to pray for my soul for supporting my, my LGBTQ friends than ever say that they're actually going to just pray for me because of my struggles as a black person. And I know some people think that's bullshit. Trust me, it's not. As someone who went to a church in, I'll actually be nice and won't say the name of the church. I will say simply the Central Coast in California. As someone who went to a church where a woman said that she thought gay people were demon possessed and no one said a fucking word. Trust me, I've had way more issues speaking up for LGBTQ rights than I have being a Christian. So this whole this whole victim mentality of, oh man, it's the days of the Roma Coliseum. They're going to throw us to lions. That's the big issue here where if you're going to make this film work, which I'm not saying this would have worked, but this would have been a better idea. You could play off the hypocrisy of the school system as well as Christianity and talk about how they're both closed off and how there could be a middle ground. If you actually approach it from that point of view, you might be able to make something some at least passable, but this movie is not about being passable this, or even good. This movie is straight up about making you go, oh man, there are people right around the corner ready to go ahead and tell me how to teach my kid. It's fear mongering 101. It's not even clever whatsoever, but that's exactly what they're going for. They're just trying to go ahead and get you riled up and all freaked out. Um, so Reverend Dave, Mike, Rebecca, the single woman who lost her husband and Martin, uh, there's another couple that goes, they don't really matter in this, but they all go up to Washington and they are going, uh, they go ahead and they speak with, uh, (laughs) they go and speak with Isaiah Washington, Congressman Daryl Smith, who's playing basically an, uh, Herman Cain, uh, a Herman Cain spoof or inspired character and this is where for me this movie just went from uh, like pissing me off to oh fuck no territory because this movie has the balls and i and i am quoting here this movie has the balls to go ahead and go (laughs) this movie talks about how the founding fathers didn't how they didn't own slaves they have the person of color 
in this movie go, well, some of the founding fathers, and I'm doing, and I'm doing kind of a, a, a jive voice because honestly, Isaiah Washington, I know Isaiah Washington has said some dumb shit, especially when it comes to my LGBTQ uh, friends and, you know, brothers and sisters and everything. I understand he said some incredibly dumb shit, but what's kind of weirdly maddening about this movie is that this movie has the balls to have the person of color defend fucking slavery. The Founding Fathers didn't have slaves. That is something that is said in this film. And the movie has the gall to go, well, we're living in a world now of... <laughs> they have, We're living in a world where <laughs> them... And they don't say the left, but they clearly mean the left. Where they go ahead and, and have different spins for things. They say New Age Christian. They say that... <laughs> they say that... <laughs> It's sorry. They say that we, you know, new age Christian. They say that, oh, well, if you talk about slavery being such a bad thing, you know, there's no room for truth. They're talking about how there's an attack on truth. And the big thing I will personally say is I find it hilarious that a lot of people who are going to go ahead and support this movie, enjoy that movie, belong to the party where alternative facts comes from. I just find that really fucking adorable that this movie has the balls to go there. And that is the one thing, and it's not even really a compliment, but it's hilariously ironic. This movie has these points where it says something that they clearly think is, ooh, burn, we got those liberal leftist motherfuckers. It feels like it's like it feels like they're like, oh, we got that punchline on on them. But it's it's self-reflective on the subject matter itself, and it's actually burning itself. So when they talk about the fact that there, they, a, a character even says illusion, there's no such thing as truth. If truth doesn't exist, there's no moral boundaries. That's a thousand percent correct. That is a very true statement. But they're talking about it from the sense of history, like, oh, wow, all like now all of a sudden we have people talking about how, you know, how bad slavery was and how, you know, <laughs> and how slavery didn't help build this, how slavery wasn't the foundation of this country, and how, you know, we don't need to talk about racism and all this. That's how it comes across. And that's exactly what they're presenting, ironically. And it's one of these things that the more the movie gets into it, the more it does it, and the more that I'm just sitting here going, well, this is fucking nuts. There's a character here, and I think it's Pastor uh, Reverend Dave, Pastor Dave, whatever. There's a point where he goes, as believers, we've abandoned politics for far too long. Really? I'm sorry, because everything I fucking hear from every president, from any politician is, oh, you know, I pray every day. I pray as soon as I wake up. It's like, no, you don't. Don't, li don't fucking lie to me. And let's call it what it is. Christianity is way too ingrained in politics. And I would like to point out, by the way, it's just Christianity. You don't hear anyone talking about, you know, like talking about their Islamic faith really in religion, you know, uh, or in politics. You know why? Because the people would immediately go ahead and go, terrorists, terrorists, terrorists. Fuck, Obama had to deal with that shit. But this movie has the gall to act like, it is just a giant attack. It's the war Christmas quote, you know, it, it's that bullshit. It's like, oh my God, you know, things are so much harder for us Christians now. Oh God, look around. Gay people getting married, <laughs> trans people having rights. Oh God, what's next? Black people's vote counting for a full person. Like it's, it's saying that shit. Like it's not coming out directly and saying it. But it's saying that. And the movie acts like it's being so clever and being so inspirational. And as I mentioned, talking about VeggieTales earlier, VeggieTales was a great fucking show. It's something that if that I still remember reading you know, the whole God is bigger than the boogeyman. I don't know how much of that I can sing fucking suits. I'll stop. But, you know, that like stuff like that, it's actually inspirational. If you're a kid or even like a, you know, <laughs> A, a weird adult like myself, something like that you could find inspiration from. But this is one of these films where as I'm sitting here watching it, I'm going again, there's, I took a Bible's literature class when I was 15, 16 years old. 
I took a world literature class my first year in college. It's one of the best classes I've ever taken. But the problem that this movie never, at any point, addresses is why does this only apply to Christianity? Why does this apply to any other religion? Because let's call it what it is. If there was a, you know, if there was a, if there's a Muhammad's not dead, oh my God, Christians could, people who like God's Not Dead movies could not go on Twitter and social media quick enough and talk about how this is fucking offensive. How fucking dare they? Like, you know that would be a thing. So when this movie's sitting here acting like Christianity is this huge uphill climb, it's not at all. And the more the movie goes on, it just feels and comes across more and more that's manufacturing shit. One thing in particular that really pisses me off. There is this character played by Mark O'Conn, uh, uh, Murzab, I believe is how you say his name. And he has a daughter in this movie. I think it's, uh, I think it's Aisha. It doesn't really matter, but I think it's Aisha. And she is there to be, she is there to be the, I, I believe, I believe she's practicing, uh, Islam with Mer- is Mer- or, or, um, no, no, she's, a uh, Muslim with Mary Serves. Yeah, no, she is Muslim. So she's there to be the Muslim conversion, uh, you know, the person who converted the Muslim to Christianity, and she's the one who's super new in her faith, and she's the one who gets in this random ass car accident for no fucking reason except for her dad, Mirzab, to go ahead and go to this church and start crying out to God like, why? Why'd you hurt my daughter? Take me! Take me! And then, of course, he flashes back to when she was a little younger and he used to hit her because, of course, every Muslim dad hits their daughter. It's, you know, it's science. And the movie is just like, yep, any minority character is either dead or they're abusive or they had a drug problem. But don't worry, because God is the multi- it's the <laughs> because God is the ultimate magic eraser. He just erases fucking everything. And I'm sitting here, again, as a Christian going... Fuck this movie. (laughs) Like, the more it's on, the more I'm upset. And here's something that's going to make people uncomfortable, but it's fucking true. This movie has the balls to show, you know, the Lincoln, the you know, the the Washington Monument. It shows Martin Luther King Jr. uh, You know, all these things that are supposed to inspire you and go, yeah, American. Yeah, it's like Toby Keith directed this shit. And the movie has the balls to go ahead and have people of color go, yeah, we're Christian. Yeah, yeah. At no point, at no point does any person of color bring up how they have been oppressed independent of being a Christian. And the movie clearly does that intentionally because the movie is not focused on actually making change. It is focused on getting you so upset as a Christian, like, yeah, we need to rise up and take down the system. Yeah. And I'm sorry, y'all. If this applies to Christians, it should apply to everyone. So me as a comic book fan, I love Green Lantern. I should be able to go, hey, I want you to put $8 billion into NASA because I have a Green Lantern ring replica, and I want to go ahead and say the Green Lantern of. Therefore, I want you to put more money into, into NASA. And so when you come back to me and say, that's fucking stupid, I should be able to go right back in kind and go, you know what? So is using the Bible to go ahead and limit abortion rights. That's fucking stupid. And this movie never touches on any of that because, again, that would be a point you could discuss. And the movie cannot have that. Uh, Dave Hill's friend, Jude, who's played by Benjamin A. On- Onyadnago, again, doesn't matter. He's his, he's his token black friend. He might as well be Jiminy Cricket dipped in chocolate. But he is only there to be in flashbacks and go, man, I love you, brother. Yeah, you're speaking like, you know, I grew up in Nigeria where you could go ahead and have your hand cut off for talking about God. And you're speaking for us. And there are, there needs to be more men like you. It's the, it's that it's basically Christian Bagger Vance for about 15 minutes, which I just went, oh, God, really? Not 15 minutes, maybe five minutes. I'll, I will be the first to admit this movie is only 91 minutes. It feels like two hours, uh, two hours, two hours, 15 easy. And <laughs> this movie, as I talked about the fear mongering, there's this point where, and I can't remember, I think it's Taylor's kid. It doesn't matter. Oh no, it's, um, 
It's Rebecca and Mike's dumb kid. She goes ahead and she's at public school, I, I think for a day or something. Again, doesn't matter. But this kid brings home this pamphlet from second grade saying they're handing out birth control advertisements, which would never fucking happen. Like, really? Give me a fucking break. Again, that's something you're not going to see in the public school system. And Taylor in particular has this incredibly poisonous, and I really do mean this, this incredibly poisonous line run of thinking. And it's maybe around the, I think it's about on the half hour mark right before they go to D.C. But she talks about why she can't have her son Jackson in the public school system. He goes, and I'm quoting because I'm reading directly here from the notes I took on the script. Jackson wouldn't last 10 minutes in public school. They classify him as special needs and label him emotionally disturbed. They give him an individual education plan and he'd become the label of the states, uh, uh, the states, uh, deem him to be. And that's why, and then his father will died for nothing. That's what she says in the fucking movie. And I'm sitting there going, um, individual education program for your special needs kid. There's usually one person minimum assigned, if not a couple. So that would actually probably be good for Jackson. And the way Taylor treats it, like it's a bad thing. I was like, wow, bitch, where do you get off? And so, as I'm sitting here watching the movie, I'm laughing because I know they're going to pull some twist with Taylor because the movie's trying to trick you into going, oh man, she's just this timid housewife who's, you know, just a single mom trying to make it work. And so I'm sitting there going, oh man, she probably works for, you know, the government or NASA or some shit. And we come to find out she literally works for NASA because once Taylor, Reverend Dumb Dave, and uh, Mike and Rebecca and her, their other dumb friends go ahead and are speaking uh, to the to the Senate. <laughs> Taylor, the guy addressing Taylor, calls her Miss Hayes. I want to say, and so she goes, "Yeah, my husband worked for the government. He worked for the Air Force, and his name was fill in name here. So actually." I have a doctorate too, and I have a PhD. So you should refer to me as Mrs. Taylor, last name here. And it's supposed to be, and the movie plays up this swell of music, like da da da, like this inspirational music. And I'm sitting here going, okay, bitch, she didn't know you were married. Like, what the fuck? Why are you being so aggressive for him not knowing that you were married? And sorry, you're technically not married. Your husband's warm shower right now. So fuck off. Like, it's, it's really maddening how it keeps doing shit like that and acting like it's just, just this incredible, you know, uplifting sort of moment. Last thing I will say while I get to my final thoughts, because I I feel the anger swallowing back. <laughs> and this is me, this is me calm, everyone. This is me after a couple IPAs trying to be calm and review this. There is a uh I want to say it's a congresswoman who uh who flat out, going back to the movie being, you know, almost meta without trying to be, this congresswoman goes, the phrase religion, uh, the phrase religious freedom will stand for nothing except for hypocrisy as long as they remain code words for discrimination, intolerance, racism, sexism, homophobia, Islamophobia, or any form of intolerance. She says that. I took this step back, uh, leaned back in my chair, I went, Huh, okay, Reverend Dave, how are you going to go ahead and get out of that one? And he literally turns into Elliot Page talking to Chris Pratt and goes, oh, well, I don't know any Christians like that. That's not an answer, motherfucker, <laughs> because that's the giant million dollar question that this movie just goes, no, we're good. We don't need to address that because, again, why would we? We don't want to go ahead and undercut ourselves. And that right there is the million dollar question that I always post to anyone who's against gay marriage or abortion rights. Why is it your religion is special enough to go ahead and change legislation? Why? Because I'm sorry, even as a Christian, I fully acknowledge I could totally be betting on the wrong horse. I could wake up tomorrow and go, Oh shit, Muhammad. Oh, not Jesus. Fuck. Okay. Well, what <laughs> like what am I gonna do here? But this movie never addresses that. It acts like Christianity is absolute. Therefore, it's infallible. Therefore, legislation needs to change because of it. 
But when the movie is actually confronted and asked about these important issues, the movie just goes, hey, look over there, smoke bomb. And it's really, and honestly, it's cowardly writing at the end of the day. Uh, like that, I think at the end of the day is what pisses me out the most. When your agenda is at the point where it takes precedent over making a good fucking film, you're not only a shitty filmmaker or shitty writer, you are problematic as fuck to your own subject matter that you're talking about. At the end of the day, that is the biggest crime about this movie. Uh, this is a go fuck yourself to the highest degree. Uh, this will be on my worst stuff, that's for damn sure. And I'm very happy I did not pay $12 to see this. Um, don't watch this. Like, don't watch this. There's no reason. Like, this is an empty house of a movie. There is nothing here for you. I promise you. If you want to watch a... If you want to watch a, a, a faith-based film, I don't know. Watch Breakthrough, I guess. Or listen to... Actually, don't listen to Adventures and Odyssey. Fuck fuckers on the family. Yeah, watch watch Breakthrough, I guess. Watch Last Temptation of Christ. There you go. Watch that. <laughs> Watch Last Temptation of Christ. That yeah, there you go. Watch that shit. But th this, th th uh. and I think at the end of the day, because I had one of my friends actually ask me, "Why did you review this? Why did you watch this?" And at the end of the day, this is why. This movie has one review on Rotten Tomatoes. One. It has over two hundred and fifty verified ratings, and the amount of people who are talking about how. It's inspirational, uh, great reasons how our country was built on personal freedom, all this dumb shit, very well done and informative. Like, I'm sorry, you're all morons, every single fucking one of you. And so when I read these comments, I go, oh, wow, I have to balance the scales. It's fucking insulting to me. It's 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 insane that this movie was made and straight up to, oh, God, what's that guy's name? Uh you know, Tad Kroger, uh, that fucking actor, uh, D David A.R. White, uh, go fuck yourself, dude. <laughs> You're a terrible filmmaker. Because even the acting in this, at its base level, is, this is worse than community theater. This is worse than shitty improv. This is worse than, like, you know, USA 1995 Silk Stockings. Like, it's, it's, it's below that level of acting. For this subject matter, for them to supposed to be so gung-ho and, yeah, let's go ahead and raise God up, up and lift each other up, it feels like everyone is sleepwalking through this. The best performance in this, I don't even have the actors, in the, I, I think it's Matt Ant, Antspatch is what I'll go with. He's talking to this one girl in the movie, and I can't find her name. Again, doesn't fucking matter. He buys his car from this girl, and he's a fucking nerd, as you would be in high school. And he starts crushing on this girl, and it's, like, maybe seven minutes of, the, of scenes between them, maybe. And it's mildly sweet. That's the best compliment I can give this. All the Christians are being oppressed stuff is bullshit, and that's 90 eight percent of this movie so yeah this will go fuck yourself i know they're gonna make a fifth god's not dead you know but i'll tell you right now god may not be dead but he or she she would be they would be running that fucking cross if they saw this movie this movie fucking sucks and everyone everyone in this movie should be fucking insulted and embarrassed straight up i don't know if these people got paid i'm sure not a lot but yeah Fuck all of you. You're you're all terrible. Every last one of you. If I ever meet Reverend David Hill, if I ever meet David A.R.Y., I'm just going to ask him, how are you so bad at your job? Like, how are you so bad at acting? Um, Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely terrible film. And, whew. All right. I feel better. All right. This is done. God's not dead to be the people. I wouldn't even ask if you've seen it because there's no reason for you to see it. So, don't see this movie. Take my word for it. You can follow me on Twitter at jhunterrealpineapple. You can follow Scott on Twitter at Nearman the First. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, SoundCloud, Apple, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Music, to name a few spots. And you can like both our pages on Facebook at 
The Real Pineapple, and Real Pineapple Games. And lastly, you can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash jhunterrealpineapple and find us on YouTube at The Real Pineapple. Everyone, thank you so much for listening. We'll have reviews up here soon for The Harder They Fall. Um, come on, come on. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, Hawkeye, when that does wrap up. Uh, Dexter New Blood, when that wraps up. And a lot of other stuff that I still need to sit down and watch. But everyone, thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you all. Take care of each other. Get your COVID shot. Wear your mask. Happy holidays. And we will talk to you soon.